This is the UPAS 1100 portable power station and two 100 watt portable solar panels that came with it. It's a package deal you can get through Amazon right now. I've been using it for the last month, testing it, looking at it carefully, handling it, going over all its features, and I want to share them with you so you can make an informed decision as to whether this is something that you can use yourself. Now, UPAS did send me this for review. I didn't pay for it. And if you click on the link before below this video, I will make a small commission. But my reviews are not about selling you the product. They're about showing you everything I can. It's like, it's like if you went to the store and you were able to pick this up and look at it and look over all the details and handle it and see what it felt like. That's what I'm gonna to try to do for you. Because if you're in the market for one of these, you can't just be buying them online and then having them shipped to you and then look at it. You need to look at it through me, through my eyes, and through, through my hands. And that's, that's what I want to do for you in this video today. Now this has a lithium iron phosphate battery. That's the latest. It's not lithium ion. It's a LIFEPO4, which is lithium iron phosphate. It's 992 watt hours, and it's got 300 or 3,600 cycles plus. That's how many times you can recharge it. Now that's compared to the older technology that up until about a year and a half ago, that's about all you saw. And that was the lithium ion batteries that were good for 500 to 800 cycles like the Jackery. Jackery is still like that. And uh, this one was meant to compete with Jackery only using the better battery. There's a big difference between getting five to 800 cycles and getting 3,600 or more cycles from a battery. That means this one's gonna last you a lot longer. And there's other features about the lithium iron phosphate battery as well. For example, the 12 volt accessory port over here does not need to be regulated with a separate circuitry on lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you have lithium ion battery, it has to be a regulated 12 volt accessory source over here, as well as these uh, one, these five millimeter, five and a half millimeter um, barrel connectors below it. They need to be regulated and that uses power to do that. So actually you'll get less per charge because some of that charge is going to regulate this accessory outlet here. And it's not a big deal, but it is a deal. The thing about lithium ion compared to lithium iron phosphate is that the uh, lithium iron phosphate holds its same charge throughout the charging cycle and drops off at the very end. So the battery voltage here isn't gonna fluctuate while, while you're using it. So you can, it's safe for your computer, it's safe for your refrigerator, and the, the voltage is gonna stay, stay the same just like on a regulated power circuit. So basically, what I like to say about lithium iron phosphate is it is regulated through the battery because that's the way the battery is naturally. And one more thing, I feel so strongly about using the LifePo4 batteries that I don't even do reviews on lithium ion anymore. I, I was just offered another review for a well-known company just this morning, but I turned it down because they haven't switched over to the later battery technology yet. Let's get a closer look at this. The heart of this, and one thing that makes, makes it stand out, is these three pure sine wave 110 volt outlets over here on the left side, these AC outlets. These are rated up to 1100 watts, and they have a 1500 watt peak. Now, most of these that I've seen in this sized range here have a 1000 watt uh, limit on their plugs over here. And this is 1100. This means that yes, you can run the big Instapot, which run, which uses almost a thousand Watts, but this one giving you that extra 100 Watts means it'll run it without uh, fear of shutting down your power unit. And I was running an Instapot here. I'll show you that in a minute. <clears throat> also, this has a 1500 Watt peak. So if you're running something that's uh, 
a thousand watts and you plug it in and it does a momentary peak, it'll handle up to 1500 watts of that momentary peak. Over on this side, it's got the five and a half uh, millimeter barrel plugs that they all have. And this is great for plugging in lights and things. And these are rated at 10 amps. This 12 volt accessory outlet up here is also rated at 10 amps. It's got a nice cover on it. Down here is different. They give you two high speed USB ports. These are rated at three amps. So these are the quick charge. And on top of that, they give you two um, USB-C uh, ports up here. One is rated at 60 watts. This is great for charging laptops. And one is rated at 18 watts, which is great for getting a, another quick charge on your phone. So this could go USB-C to USB-C, you know, the double-ended cable, cable. And I do use this for charging my phone. This, this, of course, works for that as well. So you've got everything going for you here, it, including being able to charge larger things like your laptop here. It uses 8 millimeter barrel connector for the input, which is handy. Uh, you don't have to look at which way it goes in. Does it go this way or this way? It, you just plug it straight in. I like barrel connectors. And this is how the solar panels are set up too. Uh, they're barrel connectors. They go into a Y connector and they come right into here. And of course, here's your power outlet. Whenever you turn something on, like the AC, it tells you that it's on. AC is on, it says, tells you here. And when you push the DC button over here, it tells you all the things that just came on with the DC. It shows you your output up here, and it also shows you your input. Yes, it does have pass-through charging. You can have it plugged into a wall or plugged into your solar panels and still be using your AC outlets or your DC outlets at the same time. I like that the graphics show you uh, what, what your state of charge is, plus the numeric value right here in the middle. And over here, it, this will either show you how long it's going to take to recharge, or how many hours you've got left with the capacity that you've got here. It's a plastic housing. It has a, kind of a silicone feeling rubber pad that runs around it that protects all the corners. Here on this side you can see that it's the uh, vented for the fan. Back here you've got your light, low, higher, and of course it's got your SOS feature. But it is a very bright floodlight that lights up your room. I like it way better than having some kind of a round flashlight affair. This is a way nicer light and I'm glad to see it on this one. When you have it plugged in, it's got a two speed fan on it, which I like. When it's plugged in and charging, only the low speed fan comes on. So for example, it's on right now and it actually shows you that the fan is running. Right here, that's the fan icon down there. It shows it's spinning right there. You see, I didn't even realize, just sitting here talking about it, I didn't even realize the fan was on until I put my hand over the uh, louvers here and you can feel the, the air coming out. <clears throat> that's all I hear is just that very slight fan. Now, if you do, if you're, if you're charging it and you're plugged in to something, the high-speed fan will kick in because at all costs, it needs to keep that lithium battery cool. Heat is what destroys lithium batteries. So the high-speed fan will kick in when necessary, but frankly, I hardly ever hear it. Only when I'm charging and plugged in, or once in a while when I'm plugged in, if, it, uh, if it's using a lot of current, this fan will kick on. As for charging, it will take up to 200 watts of input, and that's, that's good. Um, it does that whether it's solar or if you have it plugged into the wall. Charge times on it are, if you're charging it off a wall outlet, it'll charge in about six hours. Off of solar panel, it can be um, between six and eight hours, and car charging more like 12 hours. And like all of them these days, or all of the good ones anyway, it does have an MPPT controller in it. Also has a battery management system, a BMS that protects it from high temperature, low temperature, uh, uh, too high of an AC discharge, like if you plug something over 1100 watts into it. Um, 
And if you uh, hook something up backwards, it's got like reverse polarity. Like if you happen to hook something up backwards accidentally, it'll, it'll uh, shut off automatically over that. And if the charge goes too low, it, of course, it shuts itself off without, so it won't totally drain the lithium uh, battery inside. Now let's try a full-size Instapot. It's a very practical thing to want to run off of one of these. Put it on saute here. Takes a minute. There it goes. Okay, you can see that the Instapot is drawing 978 watts, close to 1000 watts. And this is rated at 1100. That's very handy to have that 11, to have, instead of this being 1000 like uh, most of the other ones of this size, this is 1100. It gives you that extra little edge there for running things like Instapots. Well, this is good. Um, I've got this heater running on its uh, lower setting. And it's running it beautifully. It's drawing 827 watts. It shows that it'll run it for about 50 minutes. This started out at 55 minutes, 55, or <laughs> five minutes ago, but you know what I mean, almost an hour to run this heater. That's pretty darn good. Just to show you the kinds of loads that, that it can take. Of course, what's most important to me is will it run this refrigerator or a refrigerator like it? So. Take your typical 50 liter, you know, 53 quart, 12 volt compressor refrigerator, set it on about 36 degrees inside on refrigerator mode, and in an average temperature of around, an ambient temperature of around 75 degrees, uh, that would run it for a little over three days. So that's without recharging it. So here's what you could expect. You could be running your 12 volt compressor refrigerator, using your coffee pot, twice a day, running an Instapot once a day, and uh, just keeping plugging this into the solar panels uh, every day would, would keep the refrigerator, the coffee pot, the Instapot, your fan inside, your lights inside your little trailer. It would run all of that if you can uh, just plug it into the solar panels every day. And if you couldn't plug it into the solar panels, at least you'd be able to run your refrigerator for three days. It feels solid. Like I mentioned, the corners are protected pretty well with the rubber here. It's got um, rubber, the same rubber feet on the bottom that keeps it from sliding around and also makes it padded so it's not going to scratch tabletops. It is heavy. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries are heavy. They weigh, I think, like twice as much as the older lithium ion batteries. So this weighs 24 pounds, but it's still compact enough to put in the back of your car or haul inside your trailer or take in and out of the out of your RV. I say trailer, I mean RV. Comes with a AC power brick. I'm going to plug it right in right now and show you how many watts it puts in. You can like I say you can put up to 200 watts into this, but this power brick doesn't put that much into it. It puts in 182 watts. That's the charge rate going into it right now. It also comes with the cigarette lighter adapter so that you can plug it into your car and it'll take up to 30 volts. So if you have a 24 volt system in a commercial truck, you can charge it even faster, of course. The thing I like about these, believe it or not, you know what I did on my RV, on my trailer, I put in the, coming off my solar panel, I have the female side of this so that I use this to plug it in to recharge it off the solar panels in my trailer. Because some of them are eight millimeter, some of them are XT60s, some of them are SAE connectors. They're all different, but they all come with one of these, don't they? So I can plug in anything in my trailer just because I have the female side of this in there. It goes directly to the solar panels without going through the controller. Just a little tip for you. It's telling me right now that I've got two hours to go until it reaches full charge. And only the low speed fan is running. So this thing isn't sitting here making a lot of noise charging. It's very quiet. So what about the solar panels? Let's get a look at those. It comes with two 
well-made 100 watt panels this particular package does. They each have four legs on the back. Hold them up straight. Now today, weather-wise, it's about 40 degrees right now, and the sun is bright, even though it is November. So I'm getting good solar right now, and this is pretty ideal conditions for these panels with this temperature. And let me tip it up here. I think you can see there that I'm getting 161 watts. So I'm getting about 80 watts per panel. So that's not too bad. On a 100 watt panel, you're never going to get 100 watts out of it. Um, but uh, at 80 watts a piece, that's doing pretty good. If, if in the summertime with the sun high, you know, you do manage to crank these out, maybe get maybe 80. I think the most you'd ever get out of a 100 watt panel is about 85 watts. So at 80 watts today, they're doing just dandy. Now, I do see a design problem on these panels. Let me show it to you. So I just flipped this around so you could see the back side in the sun here. And you'll notice that to, to, ha to be able to fold this leg down, you have to have this pocket open. And this pocket has a, um, a water resistant zipper on it. But to have the leg down, you have to have the pocket wide open. So you wouldn't be able to leave this out in a sprinkle because the water will go right in through this opening right here. That's not water resistant at all. To use the leg, the pocket's got to be open here. So I didn't like that. What's the sense of having a water resistant zipper on here if you can't close it? So that means if it starts to rain, you got to go take these panels in. Other than that, the rest of the construction on them is good. They're well stitched and uh, they seem to be pretty efficient at about 21% efficiency. Not bad. This coming from the front panel, this is all eight millimeter barrel connections, which I like. They're easy and uh, they snap together pretty strong. And then of course it's eight millimeter into the power unit itself. I just wish that every, this is fine. Eight millimeter is just great. I just wish that everybody would standardize on this, which I've said in other videos. I guess they weigh about seven pounds a piece. Just guessing there. There's a Velcro tab here to keep them closed. And uh, to open them up and, and deploy them, it just unrolls. So you don't have to try to figure out which way it folds up because they just roll up. That makes that easy. <clears throat> the surface here is, is smooth, but it's got a non-glare surface on it. These panels are rated at 20 to 22% efficiency. So figure about 21%. It's uh, double stitched around the outside edges and it has the grommets in the corners in case you want to tie it up to a bush or hang it on the side of a building or something like that or hang it on the side of your RV. The legs here have a uh, plastic inside them to keep them stiff. It doesn't have a, uh, an elastic that automatically folds these but it doesn't mean much. Just when you when you put them away, you just got to tuck them like that so that the so that this isn't hanging out to the side. It's not a big deal. I like them when they have a little bit of elastic in here that pulls it in. Some of the panels have that. You can see that the zipper there is is very tight. It forms a, a waterproof, or I would call I would call it a water resistant seal. So when this is closed up. Um, it is uh, pretty much weatherproof. So you can see this is a waterproof fabric here. So this whole, this whole unit is that same waterproof fabric. But it, it's just unfortunate that this panel has to be open to have this last leg extended. But I would have liked to have seen this designed a little different. 
or they could have made this uh, waterproof right here, this fitting. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sealant and I'm going to seal this hole up so I don't have to worry about it. Now it comes with about a 10 foot long cord, each panel, with the 8 millimeter barrel connector on it. And because you have two panels, it has to come with a Y connector, and that's what this is. You'll get a Y connector with it. So it's got the two females there and the male on the other side. Currently on Amazon, this is $1,429, $1,429 with the two solar panels. Its nearest competitor would be the Blue Eddy EB70 with its 200 watt panel at about $1,000. But the Blue Eddy, um, which is a great unit by the way, but um, it doesn't have the 1100 watt AC outlet over here. It only has a 700 watt AC outlet on the Blue Eddy. And then there's the Jackery 1000 which is about $1,500 uh, with two solar panels, but the Jackery 1000 doesn't have the lithium iron phosphate battery. So you're looking at a much reduced um, useful um, lifespan of, of the lithium uh, ion batteries compared to the lithium iron phosphate, uh, 500 to 800 cycles compared to over 3,600 cycles for one like this. So in your shopping, uh, I would look for, make, make sure when you buy a power unit these days, it has lithium iron phosphate. No matter what brand you choose, it's got to have the lithium iron phosphate like the UPAS does. And then the nicest feature uh, then too of the UPAS is this 1100 watt outlet over here, which um, runs microwaves and like I mentioned, the large Instapot and also burners like coffee pots and toasters. Uh, will run off of a off of this 1100 watt outlet over here, so that's a very nice feature, and I think that's the strongest feature of this particular unit. So uh, now check below uh, in the video description. I'll give you a link, and there uh, may be a a nice discount associated with that link, especially with. Uh, Thanksgiving coming up and the Black Friday sale, you're going to want to check that link below and see if there's a, a better discount for you there at a better price. So I do feel uh, pretty comfortable with this unit and it's uh, I can tell you that it's performing exactly as advertised. That's the uh, UPS 1100 and I don't think they say oops, I think it's UPS. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the review if you did. Give me a thumbs up, would you? And be sure and subscribe. And remember, uh, any review videos I do are in addition to our regular travel videos. Hey, we'll see you around.